All right. Well, you guys are in luck here because this top five has been carefully curated with one of my many scores that I've created. <laughs> uh, the STFU score, the IDGF score, and most famously, my KGFY score. I'm Casey Myers. I've created all of these scores. Um, so, you know, as you can see, there really isn't much debating these. These are hashtag bomb proof scores. Um, Did you have the GFKY one? Or you, KGFY. That okay. Yeah, that's 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 I'm my most GFKY. that's my most famous one. Um, so I'm not really sure why we even need to do this and ask what you guys' opinions are because those things are again hashtag bomb proof. Um, but here we are. So you know, I'll open it up to the floor. Let the losers talk first, and um, you guys let me know. Uh, let's let's go through it here. Top five fantasy wide receivers right now. Obviously, it's the not even the end of the season. This is this is going to be probably be flexible and and change a little bit throughout the off season. I, f- I feel like the first couple will probably be pretty pretty rock solid, but then you know the bottom half of this list and and as it grows, we'll probably all really uh, fluctuate and change by the time we get to August of next season. So just trying to have a little fun here. And um, what do you guys think? Well, let, let me got? get it real quick before we kick it over to Memphis. So th- basically, the first three are the same for everyone. Maybe not the same order, but there's three dudes right off the top. Not even really worth debating that they're top five, right? Yeah, we can we can kind of go around the room and see who's who's who. Okay. But. All right, Memphis, what, what do you got? Uh, top three wide receivers in a startup. Yeah, Justin in Jefferson's order. one. Him. JJ's one. All right. CD, CD's two. CD Lamb is two. Okay. Jamar, uh, excuse me, uh, Jamar Chase is number Trace. three. Bringing up the rear. All right, and, the, well, and the reason why the, the, it's the slight, we're just like slightest splitting hairs. For me, it's the fact that C.D. Lamb plays in Jerry World, which is a dome. And being an Indiana guy, I know what Cincinnati weather's like. Plus, they play a lot of outdoor games in December and now January with Baltimore. And so that that was like the, if you had to, they're all on a tier for me. But if I had to create a tiebreaker, the, the weather yeah. element, you know, you get those wind games in Cleveland. So the slightest of edges had to go to CD Lamb based on that. Yeah, and I think, you know, I think that's the general consensus. I think it's basically a tier here, and that's, you know, how we typically function and operate. I know that's how you typically function and operate. Um, and Who, who's number so one kinda, on your GFY oh, it's, scale? Oh, it's, it's Justin Jefferson. You know, we're, we're in, we're in uh, cahoots there. So I don't know what you guys are using, but kudos to you because you had the same answer as me. I can't argue with Justin Jefferson. I mean, after that Thursday night game, you're like, oh, man, Justin Jefferson has to be above Chase now. But then Chase comes out and fucking has two touchdowns in the second half. It's fucking crazy. These boys are just wiling out. You can't go wrong. We did this topic before just the be season. Happy you have one of them. Just right. 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 We did this topic before the season. We did CD versus Chase. I took CD. He took Chase. I'm I still want, taking Chase. I'm I still, still taking Chase over CD. I still kind of want to take CD, but I, I guess I can concede to Chase just because it seems like the connection between him and Burrow is just going to be just a, a pretty big constant uh-huh. as this thing continues to grow. And and um, I you know I can't really deny it, but I I'm, I'm happy to have either one of them. I I like I like CD a good bit. I think we're probably going to have to maybe. I mean, it hasn't come to fruition when Amari's been out this season, but like. Maybe we need to see Amari Cooper out of there before CD really blossoms and turns into having the same rapport that maybe Chase and and Burrow could possibly have. How could they? They they, they didn't play college football together. Um, but I, I'm looking at the st- I'm looking at the stats. I mean, the, the difference between the two on the season on a points per game basis because it's not fair to go with total points because CD missed one due to COVID protocol. Right. But the difference is 0.8 right. PPR That's fair. points a game. Yeah, seventeen point two for Chase, sixteen point four for CD. They're they're pretty neck and neck. With the, they're going to go down the stretch pretty close. And they've both had Chase some, is a rookie. They both had big games and then some 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 you know not great games in there, but some huge games, uh, kind of all stacked in there. So. I, like you said, I don't think you can go wrong with either one of these guys. You're not going to get too much argument from me from from those three. Anybody got anything else? No. All I'm right. Good. So let's move to the bottom two or three because I know you were t- throwing A.J. Brown in there. Um, I would probably still throw A.J. Brown in here as my fourth and then as the fifth. Um I think I'm kind of wide open here. I don't necessarily have a great answer for you. Um, it's it's early. 
Um, you could kind of go in here and say chalk being AJ Brown and DK, I think leading off in the season, those guys for a lot of people were probably the one and two with Justin Jefferson being three CD being four and chase being outside of that because he hadn't played yet. I think that's an, that's an easy answer. And I, I don't think it's necessarily a wrong answer. And that next, this time next year, we could easily be looking at this list and being like, yeah, it's these top five are definitely locked in. I mean, DK's 23 years old and a specimen and same with AJ Brown. Um, so I don't think you can necessarily go wrong with there. I like AJ Brown's game a little more than I like DK Metcalf's. I'm probably going to have to bump DK Metcalf outside the top five for me. Um, there's probably a couple other guys that, that I would maybe slot in there right now f for me. But we're going to talk through a bunch of different guys. So, if, you know, I feel like maybe by the end of this, I'll, I'll, I'll feel a little bit better. I was just fucking around with scores. Um, just in case anybody wasn't catching on to that. You don't have a GFKY um, score? What's DK's GFKY score? No, I'm but I've always sure wanted like to put in my 100%. Twitter profile that I created a score. Uh, and then just staunchly be the biggest dickhead about it, always? About it, yeah. <laughs> um, bad person, bad tweet, right? That, that's, your, that's your thing, right? Oh, it's a good we, person, we, we, bad yes, tweet. That, 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 that's uh, good people, bad tweets. Yeah, we, we, we will... Uh, we will look into the GKFY element of P score. GFKY. KGFY. It's KGFY. Jesus Christ, guys. Kindly like go K fuck like yourself. Like Kindly go fuck yourself. It's go fucking kill yourself. I'm pretty <laughs> sure. It's... No, no. My score is kindly go fuck yourself. I'd, I'm going to take it a step I'm further. Not, I'm not advocating <laughs> for anybody <laughs> to inflict violence on themselves. The, the, the Southern hospitality of putting the kindly in front of them. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, bless your heart. Just brush it under the rug. Yeah. Kindly that's what, that's what they go with down kindly here. Kindly fuck They yourself. tell you to bless your heart when, when they basically want to tell oh, you to fuck off. Bless your heart. <laughs> It's so it's uh it's such a difference between the north and the south. The north says exactly what's on their mind at all times. The south, we'll just talk shit behind your back. <laughs> then we'll then we'll pray for you and ourselves, and then go back to living our lives. You know. Yeah. Anyway, Memphis can't, can't who, put can't put a score or a good Christian in my profile, so that's always a bummer for me. You can put dad though. Anyway, you can put follower of Christ. Yeah. Follower of. <laughs> fantasy football yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway this is getting way off the rails God. railing yeah. out god my, my number four is chris godwin mm. boom mm. boom I, I, good I, I, way I, to bring I, it back I, in that's why you're a professional i've <laughs> done this once or twice yeah uh, i mean i know he's going to be qu considered quote unquote old and he'll be 26 going into next season uh but I mean, he's on pace to shatter his breakout season in 2029 you know, that was the going into 2020, he was in the top one to two. We mentioned Michael Thomas earlier. You know, he's already got more receptions than 2019. He had 85. He's got 92 already this year. The biggest question be, will be, where is he going to play in 2022? I don't think Tampa Bay can afford him. We talked about that earlier on, mm -hmm. on a different video and a, a different feed. But the franchise tag at a double is like over $21 million. And if they make another right. deep playoff run – or win another Super Bowl, th this guy's got to chase the bag. You know, you, you got to get that money. So he could drop down to like seven, eight range if he chooses, a, like Allen Robinson did when he was a free agent. He chose rookie Mitch Trubisky in the bag in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And he did okay, but he wouldn't have stayed in my top five at the wide receiver position for rankings. But if he chooses a spot like, it seems far-fetched, but like L.A., with the Chargers, or he chooses Kansas City with the Chiefs, or you know, so, some he, he uh, Packers. What, what, what if the Packers sign Rodgers, and Rodgers is like, "I'll re-sign with you if you go get me a Chris Godwin." Oh well, I would be fine with that because that would mean Devontae Adams is leaving because Green Bay's got some salary cap hell upon them. For me, it's going to come down will he land with another good quarterback? Right. So, so for right now, you know, I, I've got to use the information that I have at hand. And the guy's only 26. Well, he's not even 26. He'll be 26 going into next year. And from a startup standpoint or an offseason in an existing league standpoint, he's 26. So you're going to have 26, 27, 28 going into 29. You have four years. You have about a half a decade to figure out what you're going to do with him when it's time to replace him. I'm yeah. more than happy to build around a guy who's done it once. He had some injury issues of his own last year. He's doing it again this year. He did it with Jameis. He's done it with TB12. The guy's just a hell of a wide receiver. So I, I, I had to get back to uh, 
not necessarily calling AJ Brown the new hotness because again I will tell you he's at six, but I, I had to move this guy back up. Yeah, I, I I can't argue with either one of your guys that you have in 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 here too too aggressively. I mean when when you look at the the list of guys and the ages and and who's who and who's where it's it's do you want to take AJ Brown and DK next or the younger kind of hot guys or do you want to take a proven commodity like like you said like a Chris Godwin who absolutely could just slay for and and maybe you haven't even quite seen the ceiling because he's always been there with a Mike Evans like if he could just get somewhere with with a decent quarterback that he would be the focal point of this offense like I mean I don't know I I I can't disagree with you and he's he's plenty he has plenty enough skill to you know, demand that, that area. He see he, this off season, he was, you know, big co and, and this show big buy. Like I see, didn't seem like everybody was kind of on him for a little bit. And then he, everybody kind of got off him a little bit for some reason. Um, like you said, maybe played with maybe a broken hand broken last year. Hands, didn't injuries, crush it, but absolutely crush it right back where he needs to be and, and looking fucking awesome right now. And, and, and this is a great, I don't want to go back to what we've already talked about. This is also could go back to AJ Brown. This he this could be we could be having this conversation in twelve months about AJ AJ Brown we're having right now about Chris Godwin. Mm -hmm. So I want to make sure the listeners and viewers are remembering that as well. Remember, we're not giving AJ Brown away. We're just merely, you know, staying fluid with our rankings because people love them some rankings. Mm -hmm. They do. They that's why we're doing this right now because I could give a fuck it's less for, it's about for you guys. <laughs> yeah, I, I hope I, I hope you so. Uh, these guys, they have a horn on the desk, but they won't toot their own horn. So let me toot it. They're doing this for you. They know what you love. Yeah. Give them a like. Hit that subscribe button. Mm. Stick around for a while. There he is. Let me get a scribey. There he is. All right, Jay Wayne, what do you got? Number Who's slotting in for number four for you? I'll take E.G. Brown. Ooh, didn't see that coming. All right. All right. Yeah, I feel good about that. I don't know if I... Let me get DK. Whoa. All right. What do we got? What do we got? Sell me. On DK? Yeah. Hit Why, me. How do I have to sell anyone on DK? The man's a freak. You know? I don't, I don't think you have to sell a ton of people. It looks by our viewer and our guest down there. He looks put off by it. But <laughs> um I mean give me, he, give he me was, this give he, me, give he me was, the sell. Give me the sell. What he do you was got? probably the dynasty wide receiver one or two coming into this season. Maybe not one, but he was one or two. I believe in ADP he was two in September. Uh, so he, he had high expectations because he's coming off a year where he didn't necessarily dominate. I think he averaged 17 points a game in 2020 and Russell Wilson was balling and they were cooking and, and, and tailed off towards the end. But you saw, you saw that this man can't be guarded on an NFL field. He's just a specimen. He wins, he wins downfield and, and all he needs is one catch to make your entire day. And it looked like, it looked like no one could stay with him. Like you just can't, you can't, you can't keep up with him running and you can't, go up higher than he can go. You can't out muscle him and and he can crush that comeback route as well because of the deep threat. And and there's there is some yak ability. Maybe not it's not my it's not as good as AJ Brown, but and then and then you come into this year and it's been a down year. Russell Wilson hasn't been right. The Seahawks haven't been right. The first five games of the season when Russell was healthy, DK was averaging seventeen point seven points a game, I believe. And that you know that's right there at that eighteen point mark. That's that's pretty good and he's I mean how let's see he's gonna be he just turned 24 uh today actually December 14th which you guys won't see this podcast or this video for a couple days but he just turned 24 and probably has some maturity issues I don't know I don't love the hair colors and whatnot so it's hard for me to judge being bald as fuck but uh he and and you don't love seeing him like overreact negatively on the sideline when he wasn't getting targeted and they're losing and you start to see that divaness come out. You don't love seeing that, but the man's still so young. He's just a freak that can't be guarded downfield. I can't penalize him because because Russell Wilson's finger has a torn ligament in it. What about if Russell Wilson's leaving? Right, he's probably out of there. I mean, we we did a video that, that the writing's on the walls. I'm pretty sure everyone's on board now. Russell's fucking out of there, but he did okay with Geno fucking Smith, and I don't know what's gonna happen. But we're playing Dynasty, and like I, I've just always been so enamored with DK. I can never get a share of DK because somebody always reaches too high for my taste. And now finally, I might be able to get some DK because it feels like there's a downswing, there's a dip here, 
And, uh, you know, Russell, he wasn't good, you know. Like, Russell, I just – there's, finally I'm finally going to get some DK, I think, in my life. What do you got, Memphis? What do you? Well, I, I, I think you're right because if since they're week nine by, he has been the wide receiver 56. He's you know, he's scored like 6.8 points a game. Russell's but not right. I, I Seahawks not you're, right. You're also you're also correct because you go week one through eight leading up to the bye, he was the wide receiver five, 18 points a game. So he's had a bad run. I mean, there's going to be fluctuations. My own, I've, I've moved DK down to wide receiver seven in my rankings. I'm not super down on him. My my concern is, is has his game evolved from what we've seen? You know, he came in. You know, he had two moves, and they, you know, he he runs two routes, but he runs them really, really well. And can't guard him. Can you can't guard him. But my question is, is okay after going into year three, has the league kind of figured out your 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 third your your, your two routes? I don't think looks, you know what's going to happen. He's going to go downfield and he's going to separate. I mean, I, I, what can I'm you do? To, I'm totally with you, but that, but just got to have a little bit of five percent, five percent doubt, a little five percent concern. You know, will the read will the real DK stand up? So I, I I like him as well. I have no problem with anybody having him in the top five. Yeah, seven's not out of the question i'm not mad at that you know i just love dk i just have always loved him and you yeah, know people they, were out with the three cone drill it's like why'd you even run a fucking three yeah, cone that, drill dk but that was silly the key factor here is he loves dk but it was always too high for him to pay for dk so there's something in there that's telling him I, 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 I that he just doesn't that. want to pay that much for the well, guy i'm he taking loves. a running back usually that's why i'm taking okay. a running back and someone okay. reaches for dk right. in the top seven of a just draft that's too much things up. It's too just much clearing things up I don't have any DK. That? I love him. I don't have. It's. I can't. I can't. Di- I can't not like a guy and not have any of them. I mean, I, well, it's, I'm good. I'm good at not overpaying. I'm saying. I'm just saying that if you're putting him at four in the hierarchy of wide receivers, then you know, you yeah, can, you could easily spend I'm, that first round pick on him and be happy about it. I'm probably not gonna get. I'm probably the the wide receivers that I would have ranked f- like four through fifteen. I'm probably not getting on my team. I'm gonna be trying to get one of these young stud running backs. I think I think I want to go back to something that that Memphis said a minute ago about DK. But I think this is again just proves like the the tier method of of doing this is is because it really is like you got those three and then it feels like you could easily put you know six eight guys in this next e- e- even maybe bigger tier than that that like you feel comfortable with you feel good about them. there might be some guys that float up towards the top of that tier for you but you know you feel really good about th- there's a whole great big list of wide receivers here that that you're not upset about having on your team at all that easily could be at this time next season being talked about as oh this guy is definitely the third wide receiver or the fourth overall wide receiver and he's really just solidified it i think the thing with dk like i think you hit it perfectly on the head is have you seen the progression of of the player and i think i'm not 100 well, percent sure this that, year, that you, know, you necessarily and have and i think that's what's you know driving maybe, it down maybe driving the cost down a little bit so i think that was that was perfect um dk is now obtainable there. that's what to take away from this dk is att- obtainable and i'm down i'm still down 24 year old just turned 24 freak you can't guard him you can't jam him you can't get hands on him if you do you're getting wiped off and if you try to hang with him downfield, you can't. You got to, you know, maybe there's you can push all kind of coverage to him. So there's also something to be said for, you know, when he when you were coming out, when he was coming out and people were making a big deal about up routes, my comeback was good luck guarding this guy for more than five seconds that Russell Wilson can buy you. But when you have a guy like Tyler Lockett on the other side, who's been with Russell Wilson, who's better at maybe playing the ad lib game where DK Metcalf's game maybe hasn't evolved enough to ad lib with a guy like Russell Wilson. Maybe if you get a bit more of a traditional quarterback that maybe DK Metcalf could vibe with him like Geno Smith came in and all of a sudden the volume increased. Now, the quality of the volume did not increase, um, but he was he, he was like, I'm in trouble. I'm throwing it to DK. I'm in trouble. I'm throwing it to DK. So, you know, I think maybe maybe even a quarterback change could be semi-beneficial to DK Metcalf. I mean, it sounds silly to just say that, you know, having Russell Wilson isn't going to be great for you. But he had Russell Wilson and there was pockets where it wasn't great. Some of that was injury. Um, but anyway, um, let's 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 keep it moving here. So let's, who do you got at five, Memphis? 
Well, I, I I want the I want the listeners if they're driving their car <laughs> on on podcast form because you shouldn't be listening in your car on on YouTube. Keep them hands at ten and two, <laughs> and, and I have DJ Moore as my wide receiver five. Um, but here's the thing: I don't think you would have to pay wide receiver five overall prices to get him. This group for me from four through about nine in my rankings are really all a tier. I just really want to have one of these young guys to build around. Yeah. Again, I'll keep referencing our conversation about the older dudes. I'll, I'll layer in an older dude or two to round out my wide receiver core. But, I mean, the guy's not even 25 yet. He'll be 25 going into next next year. He's going into his fifth year in, in, in the league next year. And if this man could score touchdowns, we would look at him in a completely different light. You know, he's on pace for another, and I'll say 1,200. Two years ago, it was 1,175. Last year, it was 1,190. You know, I'm going to round and say he's well on it's his on way. The precipice. To another, on the precipice of another 1,200-yard season. But he's going to probably set a career high in receptions. He needs 15 more grabs over these next four games. And can we get this man a quarterback, even with mid-level journeyman Sam Darnold quarterback play? Through three weeks, he was – Killing it. He had his best game of the year against Trayvon Diggs of the Dallas Cowboys. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was getting eight targets a game and that dried up. I mean, he's done this with over his career. I mean, think about the quarterbacks he's played with hurt shoulder, bad arm, Cam Newton twice. PJ Walker, Texas Ranger. Kyle Allen. Was he in there? I was going to say Bruce Allen, but maybe I think Bruce Allen was the executive who got in trouble with the football team. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. But, but, but let me see that tape, Bruce. You know, Kyle Allen with his little bitty baby midget carny hands. I mean, this man has been saddled with some of the worst QB play. Mm -hmm. Can we get the man a quarterback? And, you know, one thing we know about the owner of the the Carolina Panthers is he is aggressive as, you know. Is that new money? He's ready to go. You know, it, it's it's a hell of a He's thing when money. you can buy a franchise for two point two billion and just scratch a check. Right. Hey, let me go sell some of this Apple stock right quick, and I'll be right back with you. And uh, but I, I'm hoping they can get him a quarterback. Um, I'm a little high on him, and I, I, I'm self admitted, but he's in a tier with a bunch of guys, and uh, I I wouldn't have him as high if he was twenty six. But the fact that he's not even twenty five. And if we get him a quarterback, you'll get age 25, 26, 27, 28. You're going to get another four to five years. Yeah. Is your dynasty league even going to last that long? <laughs> Fair. Um, so Not if so it started me, on Twitter, probably. Five. Yeah. I, I met these really neat – well, you know what? I met these really neat 11 people on Twitter. Yeah. And we're going to do a – leaguesafe.com, ran by the good <laughs> Mr. Scott Fish. You know, get that money secure, kids. He runs that site? He has some ties with safe leagues or league safe. Just, just find at Scott fish 24 on Twitter. And uh, he runs some great leagues. They've never had a league collapse. If you're looking for a safe place to play, I don't advocate for a lot of people, but uh, Scott fish is as good as they, as you'll find in the, the dynasty and Twitter and space. So hashtag Mr. Yeah, safe place. And same thing with the FFPC. I know you yeah. mentioned it earlier. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's, it's a good place. To That's play. their claim to fame. They've never had a, a league fold. They take yeah, a high. They, they take a pretty high rake, though, so that kind of sucks. No, if you've ever been to those, but, but you know, you, you pay, that, that's the luxury you pay right. for. Right, yeah. that's exactly that's built in cost of be, knowing that you're playing next year. Absolutely, and and, and that mean, and what that does that higher rake, yeah, it's a higher rake, but a it only impacts the winners. The rake never impacts the people <laughs> who are losing yeah. in life. And, 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 and number number two, it means that all the time and effort and energy that you're putting in building and listening to podcasts like like this and watching YouTube videos like this or the Dynasty Warzone, shameless plug, and all that time and effort that that you're putting into learning these players, building your roster, it's not in vain. Right. The league's not going to collapse in a year. Right. It's not going to collapse in two years. And that investment of time and money. Not is to mention be- the money. The money. You have to play for at least $77? I think so. Well, yeah. they might have 35 I think they, I think they maybe, yeah, they, they, they did add a $35. Mm, for all the losers on Twitter. But, 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 yeah. <laughs> Giving slow Dynasty roll. advice. Low, low rollers. Yeah, I, like, you know, hey. I like that low-key life you threw in there with uh, – you know, the losers aren't, aren't paying for uh, the rake, the rake oh, in, in life. life. That was a low key throwaway. You know, that's, I like that. That's a, that I, I used to slip that in poker. <laughs> I used to play a lot of poker. And uh, as, as a younger man, I remember saying that one time I was like, God damn, the rake in this game is terrible. This old guy named Harold looked at me and goes, 
It only affects the winners, kid. The losers are losing anyway. Of course he did. Harold's fucking a G. <laughs> Harold's seen a thing or two. He had a, he had a fucking rocks glass. Just that thing was neat. Harold. Big cigar. Pink earring. Of course. Pink earring. Pinky ring finger. That pinky would have been ring, a different. No, no. Uh, so he had a pinky ring like Tony Soprano. Not pinky, a pinky ring. ring. I thought you said he had a pink I, earring. I, I, oh, I, I was going pinky ring, but uh, he said yeah. pink earring. I and I was like, did he say pinky ring? ring? <laughs> uh, no, uh, that's the clarification. It was Yo, pink we need to get like Tony Soprano, not pink earring like Elton John. <laughs> we got to get an FF Dynasty earring, yo, for the mm, ladies. Check, <laughs> well, that's coming. That's coming. Now that that happened. <laughs> Merch. We're Merch. just giving away billion dollars like yeah. ideas here on the a FF pink Dynasty. Oh, earring. Uh, think about it. Old school George Michael, like the one with the little chain uh-huh. across. Mm-hmm. But instead of the cross, little chain, FF Dynasty logo. Yeah. Boom. Now we're talking. Come get it, ladies. By the way, YouTube feed, 100% male. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Men can wear earrings. Get yeah. it, get it. Get I mean, you see Saquon, you Saquon's know. rocking, Saquon's rocking dangly earrings. DK's rocking dangly yeah. earrings. You know, so it's for everybody. Yeah, nowadays. but they're like Send cool them and Send them style. On the arm. Free. MJ, MJ rocked a dangly earring at one point. You know, everybody's, you know. They're what's all way really cooler good. than I am, though. <laughs> all right. So back to DJ Moore. I, I you know, again, I, I can't n- necessarily disagree with Godwin. I can't necessarily disagree with DJ Moore. If you give him, you saw, if you can give him proper targets, he can be an absolute stud. Um, and it was Sam Darnold who's been, was just fine and, and got a little injured. But and not only that is DJ Moore is, is also holds a, a heart, a place in a lot of fantasy players' hearts. He's got that popularity contest. There's the, the nerdy ones. For some reason, there's guys who can't ever get the right value, and there's other guys who just value holds and love them. And they don't and even earn Moore it. DJ is, Moore is one of those guys who people love. So you kind of have two things working for you. And, you know, again, he's got youth. He's got the metrics. He's got the on-the-field skill. He's, he just needs a fucking quarterback. And that guy, David Tepper's got new money, uh, plenty of it, and he's gonna he's he's gonna continue to f- try to throw money at the problem until he fixes that that issue. Which um, DJ so. Moore, they they picked up his fifth year option, so he'll be in Carolina uh, in twenty two. But then he's an unrestricted free agent. I don't know what's gonna yeah, happen. I, I mean, would you bring him back? I'm. Yeah, I, I think. If they're ready to contend, they will. And I think they think they're ready to contend right now. If you look at their actions, they picked up uh, Gilmore. Mm-hmm. They they made the trade for C.J. Henderson with the, the Jaguars. With the Jags. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, you know, J.C. Horn got hurt. It's not a bad team, man. They need some offensive line right. help. And, and But you know they're going to they're, they're gonna be in the mix for guys like Deshaun Watson if he gets his issues cleared up. He's, they're going to be in the mix for uh, Rodgers. If he's available, they're going to be in the mix for Russ. Mm-hmm. They they will be aggressive, and if that's the case, then man, Sky could be the limit. Could you imagine DJ Moore trying to replicate what Devontae Adams has done, right, over the last few years with Aaron Rodgers, the last two to three years of his career? It could it could be to the moon, for Literally. sure. And I'll t- I'll tell you why everybody loves DJ Moore is he hits for both groups. You look at his mm-hmm. combine metrics and his analytics; those guys love him. But if you watch the tape in the film grinders, the film grinders love him because he looks so beautiful on, right. on film. It's fluid. So, so so he he hits notes for for every group. That's why his value is held the way that it has. Major yeah. key alert. <laughs> oh, Don't ever play yourself. DJ Salad. <laughs> um Yeah, no, you know, I, I can't really disagree with that. I mean, but you know, I I know. There, there's a bunch of other guys on this list who are kind of interesting, and this is why, again, we work in kind of tiers here, and I think you should work in tiers because I think a bunch of these other guys could easily be played into there. Although a lot of these guys who are kind of down here in this rank, the DJ Moores, the Chris Godwins, if you want to talk about a little Deontay Johnson, um, all those guys have either free, they're either going to be free agents, so we don't know who their quarterback is, or they have a quarterback issue in where they're already at. So that's that's your main concern with those guys. What makes like we talked about with Cooper Cup and a Devonte Adams and a guy like Nuke uh, and a guy like Michael Thomas when he had Drew Brees, it's the it's that he has the talent and the opportunity and situation to continuously ascend him to being one of the greats. And can any of those guys have it? And 
And really, one of you these guys that kind of works into this is a Jalen Waddle here for me. I know it's early. I know it's too much, maybe. But he has Tua, who right now is, if that's your worst case scenario, is providing him to be wide receiver 13, I think, on the season as a rookie. And if he does end up, they're, they're hot and heavy. with. It's always been Deshaun Watson to there. And worst case, what, oh, you end up with Deshaun Watson? Like, for me, Jalen Waddle could really be ascending into that, into this end of that you know one two three four and then any of these other guys that you want to interchange in there waddle seems super safe super young um just looks fantastic out on the field we haven't even seen like the the best part of waddle's game really explode to being a de- like a little bit more of a down the field threat that that we know he could be so i feel like a guy like maybe Jalen waddle could be in here for me and then as crazy as you wanted to sound I feel like a guy like Elijah Moore could work his way up into this scenario. Now you have the Jets situation, which you don't know how that's going to play out. Hit I us mean, with it, Rand. Hit I, us with I, it, Randall. I think from. <laughs> oh, are you, you give me give me a second. <laughs> all right, all right. Never I think, mind. I apologize. Oh, <laughs> the I, I goddamn little... Jets. Oh, from... it's right here. <laughs> there we go. A little big daddy for you. Yeah. Now the Jets are are a little bit of an issue, but we talked about Rondell Moore a little while ago. And we all like Rondell Moore, but they need to build that situation around Rondell Moore to be good. It already seems like the Jets have kind of handed the keys to of the offense to being built around Elijah Moore. It's a stat that's been floated around everywhere from week seven to before he got injured. I th- believe he was like wide receiver three, four, five, like just absolutely fucking slaying it. He looks awesome on the field. I know a lot of people loved him uh, beforehand. And then Deontay Johnson is another guy for me who just feels very, very fucking safe. Now you do have Ben who's extending that, like basically using short passes to extend the run game. But I feel like you also haven't seen the best part of Deontay Johnson's game. Deontay Johnson, I feel like, has unlimited yak potential and could get down the field a little bit, and you're not getting any of that from him. So I just feel like there's a bunch of kind of middle-aged to younger guys here who could easily fit into this spot for me by the end of the offseason. Um, so that's, that's like I said, I didn't have a fifth. Um, and then if you want to throw DK in there, I'm not upset about it at all. I could easily just slot him in at fifth and make this a chalk conversation. But I kind of just wanted to throw all those guys in the ring and just see what everybody's general sentiments were on there. Well, I mean, I, I, I like everything you said. And I, I like Deontay and I like Godwin and I like DJ Moore. And, and, but, man, give me Tyreek. He isn't, we didn't even mention his name. Like, he's... He's getting a little old in the tooth. He'll be 28 coming in the next season, but it doesn't look like he's slowing down. It looks like he, I mean, he does always kind of battle some sort of, of, of soft tissue, but he plays through it. And, and he just, he's he's maybe the engine that drives that fucking car. Yeah, it like, doesn't seem like they can afford to lose him. But he, He's an unrestricted it, free agent. He's also one of those guys that it feels like when it goes, it might go fast. Um, I don't, I mean, he's, I don't know. I mean, th- but he, it doesn't show any signs, but right. it seems like, you know, when it goes, and, and it could just DJX, although isn't the same player still really fast. and can win downfield. You, you see it now. That's not necessarily the best comparison because he's, you know, could tail off just like DJ did. No one, he has DJX anymore or cares, but like it, he still has that speed, you know? And like, I, I don't know that I'm worried about him losing the speed. He's, I think an unrestricted free agent in 23, they have to, pay him again like they can't like, could you imagine how bad it would be in Kansas City if they didn't have Tyreek like they're coming back around but Tyreek is part of that like it, he he's he's making Mahomes almost like Mahomes is awesome obviously he's amazing but like I just can't see Tyreek not being there and them not giving him more money and if you're going to give me Tyreek with Patrick That's for fair. two three four more years that's the premium version of what you mentioned earlier with Lockett and Russ they have that chemistry Right, but, but but Lockett and Russ won't be together next year. I doubt it, unless the Seahawks package him up and trade him to somewhere, which would be fucking awesome, but I don't see that happening. I, I'm with you, but it, it's that the, the game that Hill plays mirrors the game that Mahomes plays, kind of like what you said about Russ and Lockett. You know, Mahomes likes to play a little off schedule, you know, make things happen, and, and Tyreek Hill is really good at that. And you're, you're buying that vibe for the next three years. I think Jay just absolutely nailed that. So, you know, it, it, again, if you're acquiring these guys in a startup, I think that's the best way to look at it. it but if you, if you hit the button on Tyreek Hill, you have committed to win now. Mm-hmm. You have committed to building the rest of that draft around players that are going to help you win in 2022 and 2023 because – if you're doing the productive struggle or I'm going to do the, the, the punt year, you're, you're, you're kind of building with the wrong pieces. Right. 
I don't know. I mean, you can take a guy like Tyreek and still get youth, and you can play both the short and long game. He's just a good asset. He's a good player who's going to score points in your team. And, like, how many how many times do we see where you draft a – I mean, we, we want to do this show. We haven't done it because we didn't take the time to actually do the research. But, like, we've looked through it enough to know that, like, it's a crapshoot no matter how you cut it. And go back three years and look at the top guy, look at the top young wide receivers that you drafted. They're probably not in – they're nowhere near where – they are then, or they were then. Like, so give me what I know. You know, you you talked about points per game, and, and who's not trying to draft a team to to win? Like, especially well, if you're playing for some money. That's, that's a whole other. You know, problem, if but, we're yeah, playing for money, little... Tyree Kill is a top five wide receiver. If you're playing for a two hundred fifty dollar league, Tyree Kill is getting snatched up because those are mad points for the next one, I, two, three, four we, years. We agree, but uh, it, it's so in vogue right now. To be productive, struggle, losing. I, yeah. I play in a I play in a lot of leagues, and I play in an industry league. Nobody wants to win. Nobody wants to win. I'm I'm like fuck. Thank you, thank <laughs> right. you very much. I've got eight people. I've got to beat four people. I've got to beat four people. Right. Really? Right. You guys are all trying to lose. They're all arm wrestling for all the young guys and draft picks, and I'm just. I've I've won the league two years in a row. I'll just keep taking the money. Just right. I'll, here's here's where you send the money. Right. A hundred percent. Which is, is typically our game as well. Like we we're, we're we're I've only I've been playing this game for a, a pretty long time. I haven't been in a complete rebuild really in any scenario except for the league that we're in with you that we've kind of we inherited from somebody else. We didn't draft that team. It's always just been a year or two of kind of retooling and being, you know. I'm, and we can't find anyone to trade with who wants to win and take the older good players off our team. Like it's just insane. It's and. and which, I'm if you have a bad, terrible team and Tyreek's the only good player on your roster, you should probably try to reset that bitch. I'm not saying that, but like a fresh start, you can give me Tyreek. Like I'm, I'm okay with that. You know, like N- nothing wrong, nothing wrong with, with Tyreek. But uh, you know, Casey mentioned one of my favorites, Jalen Waddle. Uh, I'm kind of spoiling the rankings that I just did on uh, our Patreon podcast on Monday, but I've got him up as high as 11. And I, I don't feel it because because you hit the nail right on his situation can't get worse. Yeah. Worst case scenario. He hadn't even gotten really, loose, really. And, and no, because I, I get killed for this. People think I hate Tua. I just don't like Tua for football. He seems like a nice guy. You know, we, we have yet to see a quarterback with an arm that can really maximize his 4.37 speed. Mm-hmm. You know, I, 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 I'm not a film grinder, but, you know. Tua has trouble pushing the ball down the field sometimes, it feels like. Mm-hmm. He did, he did, he did get him with a deep crosser pretty recently. You saw Waddle finally yeah, get loose. Like the, the first game the, that Waddle got loose. He's in the Drew Brees vein and not not as much in the Russell Wilson vein. And, and and you know what? The cool thing about Waddle is he's been able to show the ability to adapt. Adapt. His, to, to adapt his game to the way that he's being quarterbacked right now. But he also has the skills that he can adapt if he were to get a big. So his situation can't get worse. That's the high and low of it. Mm -hmm. And the Dolphins do have a second highest cap room in 2022. They got 75 mil, Mm -hmm. but they've got, they've got major needs on the offensive line. I think they need, I think they need to re-sign Gusecki. Um, I, I, I think he's flashed and I would love to see like a, like a Juju type wide receiver land there. I, I think I'm really looking forward because I, I think Waddle can, can be the guy, can be the alpha. And I'm looking, you know, people see target competition as a bad thing for these guys. I don't, yeah. you know, I, I really don't. You, you, if you're the only focal point of an offense, eventually good defensive coordinators are going to take you away. Yeah. And Waddle plays in a division with McDermott in Buffalo, really good defensive minded coach, uncle Bill Belichick, really good defensive minded coach. So the fact that his game's adaptable and can grow with his current quarterback, a different quarterback, I love Jalen Waddle. Yeah, M- maybe not quite up as high as I was maybe trying to push him up there, but yeah, uh, you, you, I don't see well, I don't see any reason why he nuts. couldn't be in the top ten. I mean, being so young and yeah. showing what he's shown, and the, 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 it can only go up and. Like you said, the situation, the quarterback situation, either is his boy in Tua or better. So, uh, yeah. And can I hit on one more guy? Yeah, sure. for sure. We we like I said, there, there's a bunch of kind of these guys right here that I just read read a bunch of them that are all interesting to me, kind of floating right outside that top five position. So yeah, go ahead. My, my guy Deontay Johnson. Yeah. Um, a guy that I, I was heavily invested in. I got him as a wide receiver nine in a startup. And, and this is without knowing the QB in 2022. 
But here's the thing. The guy had 60 catches as a rookie with some combination of Mason Rudolph and something Duck named Hodges, Duck Hodges <laughs> as a QB. And here's the thing. I, I read a thing where Dak Prescott made 40 some odd million dollars in endorsements and things because he's the Cowboys quarterback. What do you think the value of being the Pittsburgh Steelers quarterback is? Yeah. Probably pretty high. So the odds of them, you know, even if it's a mid-level guy, like Jimmy Garoppolo. Oh, okay. oh you're re- you were mid die. You've been right in my you've been right in my head all this pod, and I'm loving this. I, I love it. I mean, so so you guys ever use like those Mio pour ins or like pour in drinks? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's the Pittsburgh offense. The liquid IV. You got you, you got you got you got Chase Claypool. That. You 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 got Pat Fryermuth. You got Deontay Johnson. You got Najee Harris. All you need is a quarterback with an arm that's got not a defense. thirty-eight years old. I'm, I would actually prefer the defense to be bad, quite honestly. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. But, but 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 you add a little flavor, you add a little quarterback, you shake it up, and that's going to be a damn good offense. Yeah. And this dude just gets open. So for yeah, me, I'm, uh, uh, that, that's he's on pace for 170 targets this year. The list drives Bananas. up pretty quick of guys that I want before Deontay Johnson. I've been just every time I've had the chance, I've been singing his praises, and I, I like I, I fucking love him. He's and I don't even think we've seen the ceiling because Ben can't push it down the field right now, and I think he can get down the field. He's like a fucking jackrabbit, man, and and the, and the his yak ability. I don't even think we're seeing the the full capability of that either. So I cannot wait, for, and, and I hate to say this as a Colts fan because they're in the AFC. But I and, and I like that short and intermediate game. It's not as weather dependent. The wind doesn't push it as bad. You know, it's, it's just a lot of upside. So that that was one of the guys I wanted to hit on. OK. All right. Well, I think we're pretty much wrapped up. If Jay Wayne has anything else, maybe let's touch on one more guy who's who's doing work, but is a little bit of an anomaly right now. I've been having a real hard time placing him. Obviously, we're way off the top five chit chat, but we kind of knew that's where For we were going to go. For your pleasure. Uh, anyhow, uh, but. I think Debo Samuels is going to be a, a, a just a a weird deal in the off season here. I feel like I, I'm having I'm a Niners guy. I love him. I think he's fantastic in the scheme that he's in and the fit that he's in. I, there's just I, I don't think there's any way that I'm going to be able to take him like this year. I was all in on taking Debo Samuel as much Debo Samuel as I can get this next year. I think I'm going to be passing on just about every bit of Debo Samuel that I could possibly get. And it's not because I don't think he's, Why? he's great in the scheme. It's just, I'm not, it's just, it's, it's about the cost that he's going to end up costing me. And, and, and what, like if I emerges a little bit more and now we've seen Kittle in these last couple of games, just being an absolute target hog. And then we're going to get a little quarterback turnover. We don't really know what's going to happen. Yeah. He's going to get the running ability, but uh, or, you don't some, know what's going to happen ability, with the quarterback turnover. Like, I thought Trey Lance was going to be fucking awesome. The catch opportunity, like he's had, he's had so many great big plays right now that are are really elevating him. Like when you look at him at yards per target and yards per catch and all those things, he's right at the top. Well, the next guy up there is Brian Edwards, so that kind of tells you what that stat's worth. Um, and well, one of the, the interesting stat with Debo is that he's second in fantasy points, but like twenty first in receptions, maybe. Right. Which he's he's missed a game. Uh, and had, now playing had, running back, but he's had one catch a game over the last three games, and that predates the groin injury. I mean, it's great that he's getting five, six, seven, eight, nine rushes a game, but I, I, I I'm, I'm fascinated. So, so when, when I look at an asset like a Debo, like when someone kind of comes out of no, nowhere or breaks breaks out like this, I'll sit down and I'll look and I'll ask myself, is this repeatable? Is this sustainable? Is this something that I could see happening again and again? And with Debo, I just don't know. You know, you talk about the big splash plays, the one where I think it was against Detroit maybe where no one guarded him, and it was a 78-yard touchdown. That was a Trey Lance throw, I think, too. It, it very well. Yes, it was. You're, you're absolutely right. He's got five receivers. Because everyone was like, that, oh, Trey Lance. It's going to be the best ever because he hit a wide open guy. first-round picks for him. He's so good. But, you know, he's got 11 TDs, a, a lot of nice big plays. And Mm. my thing is we've seen George Kittle smash and this team's winning when George Kittle smashes Mm -hmm. and we've not talked about IUK and we've not mentioned again. I don't want to beat a guy up for being injured, but he's, he's had his fair share. Debo. Yeah. So yeah. Debo. That's the, that's the only thing. I can't listen to the, 
he makes a lot of big plays. That's why I don't, you know, because those are fluky. Like, give me the dude that makes the big plays. Like, I don't even want to hear the big play as, like, a detractor. But you want to hit on the injuries? It can just dry up so fast, and then you're standing there can holding what the, what the opportunity, but what the Kyle, cost. You just paid for it. Like, that, that's my problem. I paid. For, I, I was so cheap this last year. Nobody wanted him because he was hurt and couldn't get right. I'll take all that I can get. And now, it's like what I'm – if that dries up, if that gets cut in half, some of these – Big plays and, and crazy. He's awesome. I fucking love him. I love watching him play football. It's fucking awesome. Um, but yeah, it's certainly the, he plays like a running back. He plays reckless. He's going to be a little bit more nicked up. And then, like you said, Kittle missed some time. Ayuk was in the doghouse in the beginning of the season. You were seeing 12 targets, 8 targets, 10 targets, 13 targets, 9 targets, 11 targets, 9 targets, 9 targets. And now all of a sudden it's 5 2 2 five, Five, two, four, and one with a little bit more Ayuk and, and Kittle smashing and, and maybe a little bit of a groin injury. But and they're winning. Right, right. And they're not even throwing to the running back right now. They haven't even had the throw to the running back too much going on this offseason or this season. So it's just I, I'm, I'm very. I, I would wrestle Jay Wayne to the ground to try to get Debo right, knowing what I've seen at his offseason cost last year. But knowing what he's going to cost this offseason – uh, th- that's that's the thing. It's 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 last year's acquisition cost. Two big thumbs up. I love it. I'm nervous about where he's going to be going. I think he's going to be going in that wide receiver 15 range. And and much like you said about DK, it's just a little too rich for my blood there. Last year when he was probably like wide receiver 38 or whatever in a startup, give it give it to me all day. That's the difference. Yes, I want the big play guy, but I don't want the big play guy when I have to count on him to be my wide receiver one or maybe even two especially when he's not a traditional it's not traditionally the big play guy you know what i mean it's like he's he, not he's a he, weapon he's doing it in a different he is, way though. He, he he's so nasty with the ball I'm, in his I'm hands saying, and he's I'm so saying, fast i'm saying not like he's doing it in different ways that a normal traditional wide receiver a big play quote unquote wide receiver is doing it he's just doing it in a completely different way well but the system is designed to get this man in Certainly. space and they're hitting him in space. And when you get him in space, like he had a fucking blocker ahead of him that wasn't running fast enough. He he just went past the blocker and stiff armed the dude that the blocker would potentially block. And just he just took matters into his own hands. And like he has an extra gear to get the edge. Like I he's mean, electric, I, and you can't fucking tackle him. Now, to his detriment, he should probably go out of bounds sometimes. Think, but he lowers that shoulder. Now, if you want to say the injuries and the way that he st- the the style of play, the reckless abandon, I don't want to come in here too many times and say I'm worried about injuries because I played that song and dance with Keenan Allen years ago, and I don't want to do that to anyone anymore. But his play style, I wish you would I wish you would elevate it a little bit to the point where let me get out of bounds. Let me not take the big hit. Let me not give the big hit. He's trying to deliver the big hit so you don't even think about tackling this man anymore. Because he's got to live up to his nickname of Debo. But and he is gonna be 26 next year, and he is gonna be an unrestricted free agent in 2023. But they have to give this man some money. They ha- he is exactly what Kyle Shanahan wants oh, that, and I needs. Get, it, 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 he's just a perfect fit, and so is, there he, are going to continue to he be is a these very, big plays he is as a long very as he good, stays healthy. He is a very good fit, but I just think that you're missing the point of just how those plays are getting done. And if those plays get cut in half, then he is ah, no longer those worth. Plays get and, cut and in that, half, they, but they dry up fast. It's not like he's just getting so many fucking targets that it's so awesome if those running plays start to dry up a little bit where he doesn't hit the home run on that one running play or if trey lance takes him or if, if trey lance takes him that's fair so, i mean so, it's just so then you start divvying up that rushing pot now to 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 jay's point I, I, i'm and jay's got my 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 wheels spinning about do we have to start creating like maybe a subcategory for guys like Debo, like Corderell Patterson, like Curtis Samuel. If he was but again, how that. long did it, it's been? What, Corderell Patterson has been doing this kind of shit. It's been one season I, I, in the that, entire that, He finally career. put it together. Oh, was, Jesus that's Christ. Re, that's why I'm rethinking yeah. about the value. At, at, He's 30 at years old now. I mean, you're, you're, I, 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 see, I see things from both of your guys' perspective. I agree with you in that. He's been living on a lot of rushing volume, and when the rushing quarterback comes in, now that rushing pie, if you will, was split up between the running backs and Debo. But now it's going to be split three ways between Debo, the quarterback, and the running backs. I'm not so that's good. That's going to shrink a little bit, but he's mm-hmm. not getting any receptions because now we're used to giving those to Kittle and Ayuk. It's like 
what is his long-term fit? And having never seen a full season with IU, it just gives me some trepidation. I'm not trying to bank on the rushing production. That was that was done out of necessity, boys. Everyone's banged up, and Shanahan likes his stable, and his stable was depleted. So he brought in Debo and used him in a different way to, to still continue to do what he wants to do in the running game. I don't know that that's going to keep up. Yes, he had one reception in each of like the last three games and still put up 15-plus fantasy points because he's busting off these long-ass runs but to me it's just the same thing as a screen I mean and they'll probably continue to give him rushes it doesn't have to be outrageously ludicrous there I think the rushing and the catching can can balance each other out I mean if they have a healthy backfield not, not but maybe the rushing production leads more to injury as well, well and, and I, that's the one thing that I can listen to. Again, I think Evo, I think you're like I love the fit. I think he's a great player for the scheme. I think he's a great player for this team. He embodies what this team wants to do. I just feel like there's no way that I'm I'm gonna pay the cost. It's just like Cooper Cup and this argue it's the same argument. It's like you're gonna pay for what Debo's doing right now next year, and I'm not willing to do that. And that that production, what he's doing right now, is probably not gonna replicate itself from the way he's being used currently into next season. And you're going to pay for what you saw for a lot of last season. And it's probably not going to replicate itself. And I probably just can't pay that cost. Like that's really all this is coming down to here for, for Debo Samuel. I think he's, he's a big part of what the Niners do and he's great. I just, if, if those big, if those crazy big plays just aren't, aren't you don't want to, you don't want to spend a third round pick on him. Basically. No way. There's absolutely 0% chance. I would ever pick Debo Samuel in the third round. I hear you. I hear you. Oh, man. You you guys are the best. <laughs> We're the worst. <laughs> oh. you're, the best. you're the best at being the worst. Yeah. Anybody got anything else? All right, man. Well, we kept you for, for plenty we long. T. Higgins, major. baby. Let's go. <laughs> T. Higgins? Yeah, well, that's a whole other discussion. I would, I would like to discuss Emmanuel Sanders, please. Oh, okay. Cole Beasley? Cole Beasley? Hey, man, he's out. Bees is in now, baby. It's all Let's about go. Gabe Davis. The Gabe Davis era is upon us. Oh, go scoop some Gabe Dave. Get him. All right. Well, all right. I got anything else? Memphis, we appreciate you joining yeah, man. us. We 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 I've been wanted to, to this all week. We wanted to do a little FF Dynasty thing at the end where we just kind of we tried to keep it. You know, we've been trying to clean it up a little bit and, and segment it out, and then at the end there. We wanted to give you the full, just throw a bunch of shit at the wall, see what sticks, see what rabbit holes we go down. So we really appreciate you hopping on with us. You're the best. Tell us, tell us where. I, I fucking, we don't have a lot of guests, but you were you were right in the pocket with everything. You had fucking great information. This was this was your pod. To you're the MVP tonight. Um, so really appreciate you. Tell the people where they can find you and, and what you guys are up to on, on the way out here, man. Uh, we're just getting ready to actually start rookie season. Um, we'll be doing some mock draft Mondays come the Monday after the Super Bowl. We'll be doing rookie content. We'll have uh, you guys on. We'll have you guys pop in for a Monday night mock draft. It'll be, you know, 15, 20, 30 minute YouTube video. We'll be arguing over rookies. We're going to have a lot of people in. Uh, if we can repeat the guest list from years prior, we'll have guys like Matt Waldman and Ray Garvin and Nick Whalen and Garrett Price and a lot of the best Debbie and college prospect minds out there to help get our dynasty listeners going on so that's kind of what's in the uh the future and we're just hanging out talking ball man at dynasty warzone if you just go to youtube or itunes or stitcher podbean wherever uh, spotify search dynasty warzone you'll find it kind of looks like the old school top gun logo mm -hmm. and uh give us a listen you know a couple weeks ago we did an entire show on aj brown and that led us to an entire show on christian mccaffrey you know what we're doing with some of these polarizing big valuable pieces in dynasty and you know didn't necessarily come to a consensus but just a different way of thinking about it and giving some time to to think through before you hit that accept trade button so uh, outside of that just a bunch of guys talking dynasty fantasy football like y'all give us the handle dmz D dwz underscore no no i can't afford the underscore a lot of people have an underscore i can't afford the underscore it's at d wz memphis dynasty war zone dwz at d wz memphis all right yeah well. and they got a great a great patreon going over there he talked we talked off air about what they're doing and, and a little bit on air what they're doing so 
go support those guys because that's really the, the the most important thing that you could do merchandise wise or or uh patreon wise and and they're, they're giving you a little something a little extra in there and and just let them know if it's for a month or three months or six months or a year or whatever just go help them boys out we got a we got a bunch of great guys that help us out this guy's been awesome you i appreciate see- that i i think it's the league chat if, if, if i had to sell it on anything it would be the league chat um just a bunch of great ladies and gents there are some ladies in there just just talking dynasty fantasy football um we're big believers in collective iq none of us know as much as all of us so if we can all kind of talk through a problem together we, we we more often than not come up with some good answers that's why it's great to come on and talk uh, football with you guys yeah man yeah, man, we can't thank you enough, man. We really appreciate it. And uh, if you guys are listening on the podcast, go give us a five-star review on the iTunes. Hit that subby button on the YouTubes. Check out all the good work Memphis and the team over at uh, the Dynasty Warzone are doing. And we'll be back next week with something else for your pleasure. Peace. Peace.